As you continue to enjoy your lunch, I would like to bring your attention to the screen behind me. There is going to be a presentation uh, about the Gen Ed Teacher Fellowship Program. This is an opportunity for public school educators to provide the Genocide Education Project. It's about a seven minute video. Do you remember if you learned about the Armenian Genocide in high school? No. No. Uh, you don't remember or you didn't learn No, about I don't it? think I, it wasn't covered. The Armenian Genocide. Armenian Genocide. Uh, so. The what? The Armenian Genocide. Uh, have you heard about the Armenian uh, Genocide? Like uh, in the South Africa? Or uh, no, Armenian Genocide. No. No, I never heard of it before answer shouldn't come as a surprise to us. Generally across the United States today, the Armenian Genocide still is not being taught in a standardized way. The government of Turkey's very well-funded campaign of denial has suppressed this education in the United States for decades. A general lack of exposure to teachers about the available resources that exist for them. All of these factors inspired the establishment of the Genocide Education Project, or Gen Ed. This has been a culmination of of a, of, a, of a few years worth of work. Thank you very much for taking the time out. I know how hard it is after across the United States incorporate the lessons of human rights and genocide with a particular focus on the Armenian genocide and its connections to other genocides of modern history into their classroom curriculum. We look at this one moment. If you don't Here. know your history, what do we see you can't happened? contradict that line. the Saitun villagers in a Syrian refugee camp. I like the geographic stuff there, and it's so easy to feed that into other rise and falls of empires. So we, for years, dreamed of the idea of bringing U.S. teachers to Armenia to give them a longer, more in-depth teacher training. We were able to do that in July 2022. 15 teachers from 14 different U.S. states. I think I was really shocked to discover that we were the first inaugural group to be brought here to one of kind of program that The work that's ahead of us as educators. We partnered with the Armenian Genocide Museum and Institute. It is important that the training was taking place at AGMI because the people, every moment they can visit the museum and being in contact with team members of the organization apart from AGMI, they can ask questions and receive answers. Also, the Armenian point of view is very important. Getting a lot of information in the morning sessions was incredible. During the course of our experience here, we've been given so many materials, lectures from experts in the field, primary sources and lesson plans and things that we could implement. And I feel that it is of the highest quality. I feel very comfortable that the material we're given is vetted. This 10 days helped me contextualize this history better. I loved all the speakers. Everybody had something different to bring in. I enjoyed some of the history. I love the museum. The exhibitions here are just so incredible. And I think had I not come on, on this program and not been here this week, I wouldn't have thought about denial as a, as a self-contained unit for the course. And But especially being here, I'm realizing how important it is for students to think about denial genocide. I find myself gravitating towards and spending important time on the denial stage. It as a stage is what allows the perpetuation of further genocides. Students need that component. Students need to hear that there are efforts being made to deny you the understanding of what truly happened. Actually what is so wonderful about this whole agenda is the mixture the academic lecture, being in the museum and, and walking right through it as we're talking about things, but then the field trips. There is no better way to learn a culture than to actually be out in the culture. You would think that studying about a genocide for eight or 10 days would be really depressing, but it was a great group of people. We had excellent outing, amazing food, and great experiences that I will cherish forever. I 
we've done programs like this before, but what really made this program unique was the personal stories that you all brought in. We felt like you were sort of opening up your cultures and your families and, and allowing us into them, and that really meant a lot to us. We can see that this culture is still alive today, and that there's an ongoing effort to preserve it. Particularly impactful was visiting the memorial itself. But to be able to walk to the memorial with the memorial in the distance and see this eternal flame and be able to lay a flower um, was a particularly moving experience. Seeing the landscape, the topography, the hills, understanding how that maybe even impacts the outcome of battles during World War I, seeing the gravestones from the most recent war in 2020, meeting the people one-on-one -on -one and being in the room with them, not through a Zoom lens, it doesn't filter anything. It exposes the rawness of the history and the way in which the legacy of that history permeates the air in Armenia. You can't get that in California. After the teachers complete the first phase of the program in Armenia, then return to their home regions and are responsible for creating a professional development training for other educators in their regions. And in this way, we can really expand the number of teachers teaching about the Armenian Genocide and the number of students receiving this education. It's a question of what is the quality that we want our American teachers to teach. And if we really want to make a dent in teaching the Armenian Genocide, and if you want this quality, I think this is the only way that we can do this. It is time to go. Um, that was a taste you had of what this program is all about, and it's so wonderful to hear the experiences. All of these different people from all kinds of backgrounds were able to take away from going there to Armenia and actually listening and experiencing from the very land. And being, you know, outside of the classroom, outside of the textbook, there's something to be said when you're actually there in person.